Hi guys, this is Miss Gold. Today's lesson is Module 2, Lesson 6, Applying Properties of Operations to Add and Subtract Rational Numbers. Your outcomes for today's lesson are students use properties of operations to add and subtract rational numbers without the use of a calculator. Students recognize that any problem involving addition and subtraction of rational numbers can be written as a problem using addition and subtraction of positive numbers only. Students use the commutative and associative properties of addition to rewrite numerical expressions in different forms. They know that the opposite of a sum is the sum of the opposites. Let's start by taking a look at example one. The opposite of a sum is the sum of its opposites. So if we just take any rational number, for example, let's start with seven. And we'll also take a rational number, for example, two. The sum of these two is seven, and I move down the number line two, I will end up at five. The opposite of that is a negative five. Likewise, if we take the opposite, we are starting with a negative seven and a positive two. So what I did here was I just took the opposite of the numbers we started with. And we have a sum here. If I go down the number line seven and then back up towards the positives two, we're gonna end up at negative five. So notice that really reflects what the statement is saying. The opposite of a sum is the sum of its opposites. Okay, let's take a look at example two. A mixed number is a sum. Use the number line model shown below to explain and write the opposite of two and two fifths as a sum of two rational numbers. Now, if we take a look at the positive version of this, two and two fifths would move down that value. But if we break it up, you can see there's two holes within that two fifths. So breaking it up, we could move down the number line to the two, and then from there, we're going to move the fraction two fifths. And so this really shows us that two and two fifths is the equivalent of two plus two fifths. And this is going to be an important element to know, especially when you get to high school, because you're going to have to know this for putting mixed numbers into your calculator. If we take a look at negative two and two fifths, it's the same idea. You're going to go down two holes. So we would have negative two. And from there, we're going to go down a negative two fifths more. So if I take out the subtraction from both of these and group them together, the negative two would become positive two and the negative two fifths would become positive two fifths. And so that's where you get the idea of the opposite of that is simply going to um, negate the whole thing, or rather both the elements within that. One important element that I want you to see here is that it's very important to understand that these elements within the set of parentheses are both positive because there's a big difference between writing this, and then if I don't include the parentheses, you would actually get a different answer because notice in this situation, we would go down two units, but then it's a positive two fifths, so you'd have to go back up two fifths. So you wanna be careful and make sure that you're understanding when you're trying to write the opposite of two and two fifths, that the entire rational number is negated. So it's two and two fifths negated. So this is incorrect. Let's take a look at example three. It says, unscramble the cards and show the steps in the correct order to arrive at the solution to five and two ninths minus the sum of 8.1 plus five and two ninths. Now notice what I did there was I indicated that these were grouped together in parentheses by saying the sum, which indicates the answer to addition. That implies that these have to be done first and that implies the parentheses. So let's start this by writing down our original problem, five and two ninths minus the sum of 8.1 and five and two ninths. Now, if I wanted to just follow the order of operations, this could be a pretty challenging problem, especially if I didn't have a calculator. So in this case, this is where it becomes helpful to know some of the properties. So first of all, we usually don't wanna deal with subtraction because we know we have rules for addition. So our rule for subtraction is to add the opposite. And here's the trick to this. You really wanna realize that this is a negative one. And so you can look at it one of two ways. 
if you want to look at it as add the opposite. What we would do is write it as 5 and 2 ninths. Instead of subtraction, it's addition. And then you have to add the opposite of these two. So when you do this, you have to change both of the signs. And that's a mistake that a lot of people tend to make. So I also like to look at this as instead distributing a negative 1 throughout. So let's look at it through distribution. Okay, so for distribution, we would say we have 5 and 2 ninths minus 8.1 plus 5 and 2 ninths. So what we're really picturing here is that this minus is really distributing a negative 1. Now notice this has nothing to do with the 5 and 2 ninths. That's another common mistake people make is that they distribute the 5 and 2 ninths. But what we're distributing here is a negative 1. Or distributing the subtraction is the other way to look at it. So the distributive property says I have to multiply this number to every number inside my parentheses. So here, this is a touch, the 5 and 2 ninths. Negative 1 times 8.1, or a positive 8.1, is negative 8.1. Negative 1 times a positive 5 and 2 ninths is negative 5 and 2 ninths. So there's two different ways to look at this. And notice that we really got the same answer because here, when you're distributing a positive 1, you're going to get the same result. Distributing a positive 1 doesn't change our answer. So this would be 5 and 2 ninths minus 8.1 minus 5 and 2 ninths. So either way, if we look at this, our first problem is going to involve addition. So we're looking at either this one or this one. So let's see what hasn't really changed. In this one, I see the orders change, so this probably isn't our first step. If I look at this problem here, we have 5 and 2 ninths plus a negative 8.1 plus a negative 5 and 2 ninths. Now, I wrote this as subtraction, but we could easily write this as plus a negative. So plus a negative. So this is really our step number one. Now that I'm there, if we look for something that's similar, I see that in this problem here, what they've done is they've rearranged the order. So see that all that's changed is these have switched. And that is actually called the commutative property. So we have used the commutative property of addition to change the order. So this would be number two using the commutative property. Let's state over here that this one was actually um, adding the opposite. So now that we're here, let's take a look at what else we have. It looks like these two really go towards the end of the problem. So the only one that looks really similar to it is this one. So let's look at what happened. I see here that in this problem, the parentheses are around these two numbers, but over here the parentheses have moved to regroup around the 5 and 2 ninths and the negative 5 and 2 ninths. And you can see why they wanted to do that, because these are opposite. So they're going to add together to get 0. So this is our card number 3, and this is called the associative property. the associative property of addition. So when we look at these two, we know that this is a positive and this is a negative of the same number. And we've been talking about opposites for several days now. So the, we know that these opposites are going to add together to get zero. So you'll notice here would be our next card because these two have a value of zero. So here's card number four. And the property there we have talked about before is called the additive inverse. And then finally we have our last one, 0 plus negative 8.1 would give us the final answer of negative 8.1. So this has to be our fifth and final card. 
the property that you're using there is called the additive identity being zero being the additive identity whenever you add the additive identity to a number you get out that number so additive identity so let's use that knowledge to answer question number four it says represent each of the following expressions as one rational number and show your steps so we're actually going to justify each of our steps here so the first thing I notice is I have subtraction I probably want to change that to addition by doing adding the opposites so here we can look at it two different ways. We can distribute a negative one or simply add the opposite of this entire element. So four and four sevenths will not change. Here I'm going to, I like to distribute a negative one. So negative one times positive four and four sevenths would give us plus a negative four and four sevenths. Here negative one times negative ten would give us a positive ten. So this was done by adding the opposite. So when I add the opposites here, I have these two numbers grouped together. But what I notice here is these two are actually opposites of each other. So if I regroup, that will help me to then add those together to get a value of zero. So I'm going to move my parentheses. And that is called associative property of addition. Next, I notice that these two are opposites of each other and they would add together to get zero. And this is called the additive inverse. And finally, we know that zero plus 10 is 10 and that is called the additive identity. Okay, let's try B. Now with B, I could really try here to get common denominators. So I would have to pull a whole number out of the five. I would then have to turn the whole that I took out of the five into a fraction. And that's a really long process. So I just want to show you another alternative using some of the properties we've been talking about. So I know that I can actually break this element up. Now it is a negative four and four sevens, meaning both of the elements in this are negative. So I can rewrite this as 5 minus 4 plus 4 sevenths. So notice all I did there was I showed that 4 and 4 sevenths is the same as 4 plus 4 sevenths. And then the reason I have the negative out front here is this negative shows the entire mixed number is negated. And so it really comes back to some of the steps that we did in the previous example. We have subtraction, so we want to turn that into addition by adding the opposite. So I'm going to distribute a negative 1 to both the 4 and the 4 sevenths. That will give me 5 plus negative 4 and negative 4 sevenths. Okay, and that step is the same over here as well. So adding the opposite. Next, I notice I have two whole numbers, so I'd really like to actually regroup this and get a single whole number. So I'm going to move my parentheses to group together 5 and negative 4. And I'm going to change this subtraction to adding the opposite, giving us negative 4 sevenths over here with addition. Okay, so this one is associative again. That's moving the parentheses. Next, I can combine my 5 and negative 4. So if I went up 5 on the number line and then down 4 on the number line, I would add up to a sum of 1. And we have plus negative 4 sevenths. Okay, at this point, in order to get these two numbers together, because they're different signs, I am going to have to actually get common denominators. So I'm going to turn my 1 into 7 over 7, so I have a common denominator with the negative 4 sevenths. At this point, I just simply add the top, keep the bottom. So I know my bottom is going to be 7. 7 minus 4 will give me 3. And that's my final answer.
In this lesson, you will have learned to use the properties of operations to add and subtract rational numbers more efficiently. For instance, in this problem here, what I did was regroup, that's associative property. These two are opposites, and so that is the additive inverse property to get zero. And then zero plus any number is that number, and that's called the additive identity. The opposite of a sum is the sum of its opposites as shown in the example that follows. So notice, when we talk about mixed numbers, if you have a negative in front of that, the entire mixed number is negative. So they broke this up, showing that it would be a negative four holes, but also the fractional value is still negative. Likewise here, we can also show distributive property here. What you're really doing is distributing a negative one to both of these. So negative one times positive five is negative five. Negative one times positive three is negative three, but that still shows that the opposite of a sum is the sum of its opposites.